In Marxist philosophy, the term reification verting Li Chang, making into a thing, is the process by which human social relations are perceived as character attributes inherent to the people involved in said social relations, and also identifies attributes of some product of social relations, such as a commodity produced for trade. In a society dominated by the production of commodities, the philosophic concept of reification identifies the dialectical relationship between social existence and social consciousness, between objective social relations and the subjective understanding of social relations. Reification is conceptually related to, but different from Marx's theory of alienation and theory of commodity fetishism, alienation is the general condition of human estrangement, Reification is a specific form of alienation, and commodity fetishism is a specific form of reification. 1. As a practice of economics, reification transforms objects into subjects and subjects into objects, with the result that subjects people are rendered passive of determined identity whilst objects commodities are rendered as the active factor that determines the nature of a social relation. Analogously, the term hypostatization describes an effect of reification that results from presuming the existence of any object that can be named and presuming the existence of an abstractly conceived object, which is a fallacy of reification of ontological and epistemological interpretation. The concept of reification arose through the work of Lukacs 1923, in the essay, Reification and the Consciousness of the Proletariat, 1923, in his book History and Class Consciousness, which defines the term reification. Lukacs treats reification as a problem of capitalist society that is related to the prevalence of the commodity form, through a close reading of The Fetishism of the Commodity and Its Secret, in the first volume of Capital. Those who have written about this concept include Max Stirner, Guy Debord, Gaho Petrovic, Raya Dunayevskaya, Raymond Williams, Timothy Buse, and Slavoj Žižek. Marxist humanist Petrovic defines reification as 1. The act or result of the act of transforming human properties, relations and actions into properties, relations and actions of man produced things which have become independent and which are imagined as originally independent of man and govern his life. Also transformation of human beings into thing like beings which do not behave in a human way but according to the laws of the thing world. Reification is a special case of alienation, its most radical and widespread form characteristic of modern capitalist society. Andrew Feinberg 1981 reinterprets Lukacs's central category of consciousness as similar to anthropological notions of culture as a set of practices. 2. 3. The reification of consciousness in particular, therefore, is more than just an act of misrecognition, it affects the everyday social practice at a fundamental level beyond the individual subject. Lukacs's account was influential for the philosophers of the Frankfurt School, for example in Horkheimer's and Adorno's Dialectic of Enlightenment, and in the works of Herbert Marcuse and Axel Honneth. Frankfurt School philosopher Axel Honneth 2008 reformulates this, Western Marxist, concept in terms of intersubjective relations of recognition and power. For, instead of being an effect of the structural character of social systems such as capitalism, as Karl Marx and Georg Lukacs argued, Honneth contends that all forms of reification are due to pathologies of intersubjectively based struggles for recognition. Reification occurs when specifically human creations are misconceived as facts of nature, results of cosmic laws, or manifestations of divine will. 5. 6. Need quotation to verify, however, some shall arship who on Lukacs's 1923 use of the term reification in history and class consciousness has challenged this interpretation of the concept, according to which reification implies that a pre-existing subject creates an objective social world from which it is then alienated. Other scholarship has suggested that Lukacs's use of the term may have been strongly influenced by Edmund Husserl's phenomenology to understand his preoccupation with the reification of consciousness in particular. 7. On this reading, reification entails a stance that separates the subject from the objective world, creating a mistaken relation between subject and object that is reduced to disengaged knowing. Applied to the social world, this leaves individual subjects feeling that society is something they can only know as an alien power, rather than interact with. In this respect, Lukacs's use of the term could be seen as prefiguring some of the themes Martin Heidegger 1927 touches on in Being in Time. Supporting the suggestion of Lucian Goldman 2009 that Lukacs and Heidegger were much closer in their philosophical concerns than typically thought. 8. French philosopher Louis Althusser criticized what he called the 
ideology of reification, that sees, things everywhere in human relations. 9. Althusser's critique derives from his theory of the, epistemological break, which finds that Marx underwent significant theoretical and methodological change between his early and his mature work. Though the concept of reification is used in Das Kapital by Marx, Althusser finds in it an important influence from the similar concept of alienation developed in the early the German ideology and in the economic and philosophical manuscripts of 1844. Marx's concept of reification is a multi-dimensional concept. His analysis addresses both the nature of the social structure and the nature of social consciousness, as well as the reciprocal relations between these two levels. By contrast, as appropriated by mainstream sociology, the first of these dimensions, the social structural dimension, disappears and reification, like alienation, is reduced to a psychological characteristic of the abstract individual. This tendency is apparent in the writings of Peter Berger, the theorist most responsible for introducing the concept of reification into American sociology. In Berger's construction, reification is interpreted as a state of amnesia in which the individual forgets the human origins of the social world. Social phenomena are apprehended instead, as if they were something else than human products such as facts of nature, results of cosmic laws, or manifestations of divine will. Berger and Luckman, 1966, 89. This, forgetfulness, is explained, in turn, as a defensive reaction by which the individual seeks to establish psychic stability in the face of some fundamental terrors of human existence, notably the terror of chaos, Berger and Polberg, 1966, 68. The analysis of reified consciousness is thus separated from the analysis of the particular social relations that are reified and translated into a cultural and historical universal. Karl Marx's theory of alienation describes the estrangement German Entfremdung of people from aspects of their human nature Gattingswesen, species essence, as a consequence of the division of labor and living in a society of stratified social classes. The alienation from the self is a consequence of being a mechanistic part of a social class, the condition of which estranges a person from their humanity. 1. History and Class Consciousness Studies in Marxist Dialectics German Geschichte und Klassenbewusstsein Studien über Marxistische Dialektik is a 1923 book by the Hungarian philosopher Georg Lukacs, in which the author re-emphasizes the philosopher Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's influence on the philosopher Karl Marx, analyzes the concept of class consciousness, and attempts a philosophical justification of Bolshevism. The book helped to create Western Marxism and is the work for which Lukacs is best known. Nevertheless, it was condemned in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, and Lukacs later repudiated its ideas, coming to believe that in it he had confused Hegel's concept of alienation with that of Marx's. It has been suggested that the concept of reification as employed in the philosopher Martin Heidegger's Being in Time 1927, was influenced by history and class consciousness, though such a relationship remains disputed. Lukacs attempts a philosophical justification of Bolshevism, stressing the distinction between actual class consciousness and, ascribed, class consciousness, the attitudes the proletariat would have if they were aware of all of the facts. One, Marx's idea of class consciousness is seen as a thought which directly intervenes into social being. Two, claiming to return to Marx's methodology, three, Lukacs re-emphasizes the philosopher Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel's influence on the philosopher Karl Marx, emphasizes dialectics over materialism, makes concepts such as alienation and reification central to his theory, one, and argues for the primacy of the concept of totality. Three, Lukacs depicts Marx as an eschatological thinker. Four, he develops a version of Hegelian Marxism that contrasted with the emerging Soviet interpretations of Marxism based on the work of the philosopher Georgi Plekhanov and the dialectics of nature inspired by the philosopher Friedrich Engels. Three, in the essay, What is Orthodox Marxism? Lukacs argues that methodology is what distinguishes Marxism, even if all its substantive propositions were rejected, it would remain valid because of its distinctive method. 5. According to Lukacs, Orthodox Marxism, therefore, does not imply the uncritical acceptance of the results of Marx's investigations. It is not the belief in this or that thesis, nor the exegesis of a sacred book. On the contrary, orthodoxy refers exclusively to method. It is the scientific conviction that dialectical materialism is the road to truth and that its methods can be developed, expanded and deepened only along the lines laid down by its founders. 6. 
Gluckix maintains that it is through Marx's use of the dialectic that capitalist society can be seen as essentially reified and the proletariat viewed as the true subject of history and the only possible salvation of humanity. All truth, including Marx's materialist conception of history itself, is to be seen in relation to the proletariat's historical mission. Truth, no longer given, must instead be understood in terms of the relative moments in the process of the unfolding of the real union of theory and praxis, the totality of social relations. This union must be grasped through proletarian consciousness and directed party action in which subject and object are one. 3. History and Class Consciousness was republished in 1967 with a new preface in which Luckix described the circumstances that allowed him to read Marx's newly rediscovered economic and philosophic manuscripts of 1844 and 1930, two years before their publication. After reading them, Luckix concluded that in history and class consciousness he had made a basic mistake, that of confusing Hegel's and Marx's respective concepts of alienation. To Hegel, alienation is the objectivity of nature, but for Marx, it refers not to natural objects but to what happens to the products of labor when social relationships make them commodities or capital. History and class consciousness is influential in the work for which Luckix is best known. 819 Luckix pronouncements in, What is Orthodox Marxism? have become famous. 5. History and class consciousness helped to create Western Marxism in Europe and the United States and influenced the sociologist Karl Mannheim's work on the sociology of knowledge. However, it led to Luckix being condemned in Eastern Europe and the Soviet Union. In response to the communist attack on his work, Luckix wrote an essay on the Russian revolutionary Vladimir Lenin's views, Lenin, a study in the unity of his thought, 1924. 3. In his later career, Luckix repudiated the ideas of history and class consciousness, in particular the belief in the proletariat as a subject-object of history. As late as 1925-1926, he still defended these ideas, in an unfinished manuscript, which he called Talism and the Dialectic. It was not published until 1996 in Hungarian. It appeared in English in 2000 under the title A Defense of History and Class Consciousness. The political scientist David McClellan maintains that the publication of Marx's key earlier writings vindicated Luckix's interpretation of Marx. 1. The philosopher Lucio Coletti believes that although the publication of those writings disproved some of Luckix's assumptions, the problem of the nature of alienation remained valid. 7. The critic Frederick Cruz writes that in history and class consciousness, Luckix made a faithfully ingenious attempt to abolish, through metaphysical prestidigitation, the newly apparent chasm between Marx's historical laws and the triumph of Bolshevism. 10. History and class consciousness was a crucial text for the French situationist theorist Guy Debord. 11. Although Debord maintained that Luckix, by arguing that the Bolshevik party provided a mediation between theory and practice that enabled proletarians to determine events within their organization instead of being spectators of them, was describing the opposite of how it functioned in reality. 12. Others influenced by history and class consciousness include the philosopher Jürgen Habermas, whose initial understanding of Marx came through the book, 13. And the evolutionary geneticist Richard Lewontin, the neurobiologist Stephen Rose, and the psychologist Leon Kamin. 14. The philosopher Tom Rockmore has described history and class consciousness as brilliant. 13. The economists M. C. Howard and J. E. King praise the sophistication of Luckick's Hegelian understanding of how to specify the interests of the proletariat. 15. The philosopher Slavoj Žižek describes the Luckick's of history and class consciousness as the philosopher of Lenin's historical moment. Zizek credits Luckix with bringing together the topic of commodity fetishism and reification with the topic of the party and revolutionary strategy. 16. Some writers have compared Luckix to the philosopher Martin Heidegger, though the existence of any relationship between the two has been disputed. 17. 18. The critic George Steiner writes that Luckix shares with Heidegger, a commitment to the concrete, historically existential quality of human acts of perception and intellection. 17. In spite of Steiner's assessment of a supposedly similar view upon history and historical acts shared by Luckix and Heidegger, Theodor W. Adorno, whose own critical theory was deeply indebted to history and class consciousness, 1920-21 maintained in his negative dialectics that Heidegger lacked any proper concept of history and historicity, and especially any that could be compatible to Marxist thought in any way, shape, or form. 22. The Marxist philosopher Lucian Goldman argued that 
The concept of reification as employed in Being in Time, 1927, was influenced by Luckix, although Heidegger never mentions Luckix in his writing and Lawrence Paul Hemming finds the suggestion that Luckix influenced Heidegger to be highly unlikely at best. 18. The historian Michel Trebich endorsed Goldman's view that Heidegger was indebted to Luckix. Trebich compared history and class consciousness to the philosopher Henri Lefebvre's La Conscience Mystifiée, 1936, finding them to be similar in the way that they both offered a Marxist theory of consciousness breaking with the theory of transparency of being which had informed the philosophical tradition. 23. Marxism is a left-wing to far-left 1-2-3 method of socio-economic analysis that uses a materialist interpretation of historical development, better known as historical materialism, to understand class relations and social conflict in a dialectical perspective to view social transformation. It originates from the works of 19th-century German philosophers Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. As Marxism has developed over time into various branches and schools of thought, no single, definitive Marxist theory exists. 4. In addition to the schools of thought which emphasize or modify elements of classical Marxism, various Marxian concepts have been incorporated and adapted into a diverse array of social theories leading to widely varying conclusions. 5. Alongside Marx's critique of political economy, the defining characteristics of Marxism have often been described using the terms dialectical materialism and historical materialism, though these terms were coined after Marx's death and their tenets have been challenged by some self-described Marxists. 6. Marxism as a school of thought has had a profound impact on society and global academia, having influenced many fields, including anthropology, 7, 8, archaeology, art theory, criminology, cultural studies, economics, education, 9, ethics, film theory, geography, 10, historiography, literary criticism, media studies, 11, 12, philosophy, political science, political economy, psychology, science studies, 13, sociology, urban planning, and theater.